I'm sorry, I don't speak watermelon. MC Bear Bear, you've got a tear tear. This isn't MC Bear Bear. This is Master of Ceremonies Bear Bear, which was introduced in Future Vision. This is MC Bear Bear, which was introduced in Mirror Gem. Why they made two different bears with the same acronym is beyond me. Funny how Steven's healing spit has been MIA for literally a season and a half, only for it to come back now to conveniently serve this kind of plot. I mentioned it once and I'll do it again. Why would you introduce a character's power only to immediately drop it? Look what I can do! With my future vision, I can see you're going to ask if you could use your power to heal one of the monsters in the bubble room. Well, good thing Steven wasn't gonna ask you if you wanted to go get food or something, cause you'd sure look like a fucking idiot right about now, wouldn't you? Future vision in general is dumb, but using it to try to predict one question out of millions someone can ask you is very ambitious, to say the least. Why did you agree to this? I lost the battle of will. Ow, you couldn't have done that any gentler? How do you hear and look at that and go, ah yes, this gem is no longer corrupted, my plan was flawless. It's an improvement, sure, but to say it worked is also rather ambitious. Pearl isn't even looking at Steven as she talks here, she's just staring off into space. I try not to bring it up much because the same critique gets old after a while, but this is just one of the several examples of this episode's art direction being weird again. She can walk and talk, just like you guys. Walk, sure, but talk? I didn't know Steven spoke Klingon. You don't remember saving me from that seagull, or our adventure in the ice caves, or when I electrocuted you with, uh, actually, do forget that one. I love chips. <laughs> do you remember me singing the chaps jingle? Not necessarily. She could have just been repeating the jingle you just sang. This turns out to be a whole different language that Gems used, which is honestly another neat detail that the Kroniverse went the extra mile for. However, Nephrite's hands are black in this shot instead of brown, a detail that the Kroniverse sure didn't go that extra mile for. This is actually Hessonite from Save the Light. That's pretty damn cool. You heard something from the sky, a, a sound, a song, and then... <laughs> Senti? I really like this sequence. It's not exactly an original way to get lore from something you can't understand, but the story itself is really impactful. If there's anything Steven Universe did really well earlier on, it's building the lore up. Why is this only temporary? Did this only stave off the corruption and thus it's spreading again? Because that's really not how healing things works. And even then, that can't be because when he tries it again, it seemingly stops working. What the fuck's making it stop working then? And if your counter argument to that is Steven's healing power is not working very well on mental ailments, then why did this even start to work in the first place? And if anything, this could lead into another aspect of the critique of how corrupted gems work as a whole. Some of it seems so random. Nephrite somehow turns into this thing. This guy somehow turns into a wind-blowing pufferfish. How does all this shit work? Corruption as a concept is cool, but the way it works desperately needed exploring. It leaves all these unanswered questions that make scenes like this come out of nowhere and make little sense. This turns out to be Nephrite's ship, which is another really good bit of world building we've seen earlier on. However, a hole was actually blown into the ceiling of this ship, which appears to be missing here. The size of this door changes a couple times in between shots. In this shot, it comes up to about the centipedal's top beak thing, then it shrinks to below her mouth, then it's bigger than her. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Watch the four letters, Stewball.